Hi everyone, Paul here from Wiley's Outdoor World and today we're going to be covering episode 3 in our Bushcraft Tinder series. So in this episode we're going to be covering fatwood. Uh, we'll go over what it is you're looking for, how to identify and find fatwood, what it is, what actually causes fatwood to exist and also some of the pros and cons that come along with using fatwood and we'll also go over a wee bit about how it was used and you know the best way to to use it to get a fire going. Uh, if you haven't seen the other two episodes we've covered birch bark and we've covered cattails so far so if you haven't seen those go back on the YouTube and have a look. First of all I'm going to show you guys what it is you're looking for how to identify pine which is where we usually find fatwood as in pine trees. As you can see I've got a couple behind me here so I'll give you a quick quick rundown on the pine tree and then we'll move on to what it is we're actually looking for. Okay everyone, so here we have a pine tree. This is the bark of a pine tree, as you can see it's quite scaly, a sort of dark brown colour. Sometimes has this sort of moss stuff growing over it, old man's beard it's also called. And um, the pine needles, this, these trees are about maybe 30, 40 feet high. But I've got some pine needles here that have come down in some wind recently. So that's the sort of needles you're looking for, hopefully you can see that. And the easiest way to identify pine by the needles when you pull the needles off they come in twos hopefully you can see that if the camera will focus but one of the, the easiest ways to identify it if you're not too sure is just to find some some needles that will come down on the ground and it should happen with just about every single one you pull out they come in twos Another way of identifying it is um, sometimes you'll find yellow resin or sap coming out of it if it's been damaged. So if there's a hole in the tree, it will leak. It will leak the resin or sap, and that can be used for other things. And we'll cover that in a later video series as well. So that's what it is we're looking for. But this is obviously a living tree. What we're looking for is a dead tree, and uh, I'll go and try and find one of those just now, and I'll bring you back once we've got one. Okay guys, so we have our down pine tree behind us and this is sort of exactly what we're looking for. It's been down for a while and it's started to decompose and as you can see I managed to just go and pick out some of the wood. It's all sort of mushy, what we might call punk weed. So that's the sort of state we're looking to find the tree in. And where we're going to find fat wood is where the branches connect with the tree. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how fat wood is formed using my mini tree here. Let's say this is our full size pine tree and here we have branches and this here would be the main trunk. So what happens is when a pine tree dies all the resin that's been built up in these branches and feeding the um, pine needles will rush down towards what's known as the shoulder of the tree and it tends to get stuck here and can't get back into the actual main trunk of the tree itself so it will build up here and because pine resin is so oily and, well, resinous, it tends to preserve the wood in that spot. So even though a tree like the one I just showed you there looks very sort of decomposed and, you know, like you get nothing out of it, you will actually find preserved wood filled with this um, resin that's built up in the shoulder of these joints. Another place you can find it is as the tree dies, all the resin that's in the trunk will go directly down if it's been cut in half away from the roots, so the roots are over here and the trees over here, it will be in the sort of furthest point closest to the ground. But if it's still attached to the roots, so there's still roots attached to it, I should say, um, the resin will also build up in these roots as well, so we can find it there. But today we're going to look at finding it in the shoulder, and um, we'll uh, go over what it looks like and how to sort of dig it out as well. It's not too hard. Um, just a knife or a small stone or whatever to bash it out. So let's go and show you that close up just now.
Okay everyone, so this is kind of what we're looking for. You can see here we found um, a very soft and squishy tree. And here we have the shoulder that we were just talking about. So that's where the branch comes down, it connects to the tree here. And it's in this bit here that we're going to find our fat wood. So all we want to do is just kind of cut that out. And because of how soft this wood is, it shouldn't be too, too hard to do. So what I like to do is just cut around it and then sort of wiggle it out. You can see it's quite loose already. So I'm just going to cut into it, take away as much material from around it as possible, and then we'll pull it out. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that. I've just dug around it and um, it should come loose fairly easily now. And one thing I like to do before getting too stuck in, it's just a simple little check you can do to test whether or not the wood actually is fat wood or not. And it's quite simple, all you have to do is tap the top of the tree. So you can hear that's quite sort of dull, which would suggest it's hollow and not very dense. And then when we tap the bottom, you can hear it's higher pitched, which would suggest it's it's denser, and that to me suggests fat wood because that wood's going to be preserved harder and full of resin. So what I'm going to do now is just pull this out, and um, I'll show you guys what it is we've found. Okay then, so hopefully you can see that. We pulled it out and this is the shoulder that I was talking to you about where the, the branch connects to the tree. And this is exactly what we're looking for. I can tell already from down here. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. That's the sort of wood we're looking for. That's already got some, some pine resin in it. So what we're going to do now is go and clean this up and I'll show you what fat wood actually looks like and I'll show you how I like to sort of prepare it and then carry it home.
Okay guys, so there we have it. We have our fat wood here. As you can see, it's incredibly dark red in colour. Sticky to the touch, and the biggest giveaway is it smells really, really strong of pine resin. And another big difference is the colour. You can see here, this is sort of regular pine wood. And that there would be your fat wood. It's almost sort of translucent. So unfortunately, because it's getting dark and I'm running out of time, I can't show you how I'd process this down further, but I do have an example with me, and that would be it there. All I've done with that is just cut it into a nice little rectangle and put a loop on it, and that would go in my fire kit. And it doesn't take any more processing than that. All you would do with this then is shave bits of fat wood off, little shavings, and then you'd use your ferro rod to ignite that with just the smallest of sparks. So let's go over the, the pros and cons of fat wood. Pros for me are that it's incredibly effective. Once you've got your shavings, it takes only the smallest of sparks to get it going. Once it is going, it burns for a very long time and also quite hot as well. And because we're just using that initial flame to get other tinders going, so the likes of birch bark or dried grass, this will last an incredible long time because all you're doing is just shaving tiny little tiny little bits off it so this will last a long time in your kit. Cons if there is any, I suppose it's a wee bit of a hassle to, to gather and process and maybe if it's a windy day you'll have a hard time getting your shavings to stay in one place. But overall it's an incredibly effective tinder and it's something I highly recommend you go out and play with because I only started using it recently and it surprised me no ends because of just how effective it is. But on that note, I'm going to have to call this video. I hope you enjoyed it and like I said at the start of the video, if you haven't seen our previous episodes, feel free to go back and check out our YouTube. There's birch bark and cattail on there. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all again soon.